Exodus chapter 25 Yahweh spoke to Moses and said Tell the sons of Israel to set aside a contribution for me you shall accept this contribution from every man who gives from the heart the things you shall accept from them are these gold silver and bronze purple cloth of violet shade and red crimson cloth fine linen goat's hair ram skins dyed red fine leather cassia wood oil for the lamps spices for the chrism and for the fragrant incense precious stones and gems to be set in priestly vestments for they must build me a sanctuary so that i may dwell among them and you shall make the tabernacle and its furnishings following exactly the pattern i shall show you you are to make me an ark of acacia wood 2 and 1/2 cubits long 1 and 1/2 cubits wide 1 and 1/2 cubits high You want to cover it with pure gold inside and out and decorate it all around with a gold molding. You will cast four gold rings for the ark and fix them to its four supports. Two rings on one side and two rings on the other. You will also make poles of acacia wood covered with gold. and pass the poles through the rings on the sides of the ark to carry the ark by these the poles must remain in the rings of the ark and not be withdrawn inside the ark you will place the terms of the covenant that i shall give you further you ought to make the mercy seat of pure gold 2 and 1/2 cubits long and 1 and 1/2 cubits wide for the two ends of the mercy seat you ought to make two golden cherubim of hammered gold make the first cherub for one end and the second for the other and fasten them to the two ends of the cover so that they may make one piece with it the cherubim are to have their wings spread upward so that they overshadow the mercy seat they must face one another their faces towards the mercy seat you must place the mercy seat on the top of the ark inside the ark you must place the stone tablets with the terms of the covenant that i shall give you that i shall come to meet you that from above the mercy seat from between the two cherubim on it i shall give you all my commands for the people of israel you ought to make a table of acacia wood 2 cubits long 1 cubit wide and 1 and 1/2 cubits high you ought to cover it with pure gold and decorate it all around with a gold lid you ought to surround it with a frame 3 inches wide and decorate these with a golden edge you ought to make for it four gold rings and fix these at the four corners where the four legs are the rings must be close to the frame to hold the poles for carrying the table you ought to make the poles of acacia wood and cover them with gold the table is to be carried by these you ought to make dishes cups jars bowls to be used for the wine offerings you ought to make these of pure gold on the table before me you must place the bread of continual offering 
you are to make a lamp stand of pure gold the lamp stand must be of hammered gold both its base and stem its decorative flowers including buds and petals must be of one piece with it six branches must extend from its sides three from one side three from the other each of the six branches of the lamp stand is to have three decorative flowers shaped like almond blossoms each with its bud and petals the lamp stand itself is to have four decorative flowers shaped like almond blossoms each with its bud and petals thus one bud under the first two branches extending from the lamp stand one under the next pair one under the last pair corresponding to the six branches extending from the lamp stand the buds and the branches must be of one piece with the lamp stand and the whole made from a single piece of pure hammered gold then you are to make lamps for it seven of them and set them so that they throw their light toward the front of it tongues for extinguishing the burning lamps and trays must be of pure gold you ought to use 75 pounds of pure gold for making the lamp stand and all its accessories see that you make them according to the pattern shown you on the mountain Exodus chapter 26 The holy tent itself you ought to make with 10 sheets of fine twined linen of purple wool violet shade and red and of crimson wool you ought to have these sheets finely embroidered with angels the length of a single sheet is to be 28 cubits its width 4 cubits all the sheets to be of the same size five of the sheets must be sewed together and the other five also you must attach loops of violet wool to the border of the last sheet in one set and do the same for the border of the last sheet in the other set you want to put 50 loops on the first sheet and matching them one by one 50 loops on the border of the last sheet in the second set and you ought to make 50 gold clasps to draw the sheets together in this way the holy tent will be a unified whole you ought to make sheets of goat's hair to form a cover over the holy tent there will be seven sheets the length of a single sheet is to be 30 cubits its width 4 cubits the 11 sheets to be all of the same size you must sew five of these sheets together into one sheet the remaining six into another the sixth you will fold double over the front of the cover you must attach 50 loops to the border of the last sheet in one set and do the same for the border of the last sheet in the second set you must make 50 bronze clasps and put them into one of the loops so as to draw the two sets together to form one tent over the holy tent one sheet will be left over half of which is to hang over the back of the holy tent this extra cubit is to hang over the sides of the holy tent as covering for it for the holy tent you will make further coverings one of ram skins dyed red and to spread over this another covering of fine leather you ought to make frames of acacia wood for the holy tent which will stand upright each board is to be 10 cubits long and 1 and 1/2 cubits wide each board shall have two arms 
that shall serve to fasten the boards in line for all the frames of the holy tent you must do this there will be 20 boards for the southern side of the holy tent you ought to make 40 silver bases for putting under the 20 boards thus two bases under the first board to receive its two matching arms and so on for the other boards the other side of the tabernacle on the north is to have also 20 boards supported by 40 silver bases two bases under each board for the back of the holy tent on the west you must make six boards and also two boards for the corners at the back of the holy tent these boards must be joined at the bottom and also at the top up to the level of the first ring and the same for the two boards that ought to form the two corners so there will be eight boards with their 16 silver bases two bases under the first board and so on you ought to make five cross bars of acacia wood to hold together the boards for one side of the tabernacle and five to hold the boards that form the other side of the holy tent they will run off way up the boards from one end to the other the boards are to be covered with gold and with gold rings on them to take the cross bars which you are to cover with gold this is how you are to set up the holy tent according to the model shown to you on the mountain you are to make a veil of purple wool violet shade and red of crimson wool and a fine twined linen you ought to have it finely embroidered with cherubim you ought to hang it on four posts of acacia wood covered with gold and furnished with gold hooks and set in four silver bases you must hang the veil from the clasps and there behind the veil you must place the ark of the covenant and the veil will serve to separate the holy place from the holy of holies the mercy seat you must place on top of the ark inside the holy of holies outside the veil you shall set the table and the lamp stand on the south side of the holy tent opposite the table for the table will be on the north side finally for the entrance to the tent you ought to make curtain of purple wool violet shade and red and of crimson stuffs and fine twined linen the work of a skilled embroiderer and you shall have for this curtain five posts of acacia wood covered with gold with gold hooks for these you ought to cast five bronze bases Exodus chapter 27 You ought to make an altar out of acacia wood a square 5 cubits long and 5 cubits wide its height to be 3 cubits at its four corners you ought to put horns the horns to be of one piece with it covering it with bronze for the service of the altar you ought to make pans for the ashes for burning the fat as well as shovels sprinkling basins fire pans you must make all the vessels for the altar out of bronze you are also to make a grating for it of bronze network and on the four corners of this put four bronze rings you shall set it under the altar's ledge below so that it reaches off way up the altar and for the carrying of the altar you ought to make poles of acacia wood and cover them with bronze these ought to be passed through the rings so that they are on either side of the altar when it is carried you ought to make the altar of hollowed out boards in the same way that was shown to you on the mountain you ought to make also the coat of the holy tent 
the hangings of the court on the side facing south are to be of fine twined linen 100 cubits long for one side their 20 bronze posts are to be set in the 20 bronze bases and to have hooks and rods of silver so too for the northern side there are to be hangings 100 cubits long and 20 posts set in 20 bases with their hooks and rods of silver across the width of the court on the western side there are to be 50 cubits of hangings carried on 10 posts set in 10 bases the width of the court on the eastern side facing the sunrise is to be 50 cubits on one side of the gateway there are to be 15 cubits of hangings carried on 3 posts set in 3 bases on the other side of the gateway there are also to be 15 cubits of hangings carried on 3 posts set in 3 bases the gateway to the court is to consist of a curtain 20 cubits wide made of purple wool violet shade and red of crimson wool and fine twined linen the work of a skilled embroiderer carried on four posts set in their four bases all the posts enclosing the court are to be connected by silver rods their hooks are to be of silver their bases of bronze the length of the court is to be 100 cubits its width 50 cubits its height 5 cubits all the hangings are to be made of fine twined linen and their bases of bronze all the furnishings for whatever use in the tabernacle all the pegs of it and of the court must be of bronze you ought to command the people of israel to bring you pure olive oil for the light and to keep your flame burning there perpetually aaron and his sons are to set this flame in the tent of meeting outside the veil that is before the statement it must burn there before yahweh from evening to morning perpetually this command is to be kept forever by the people of israel exodus chapter 28 set apart of the sons of israel your brother aaron and his sons and summon them to be priests in my service aaron nadab and abihu eliasar and itamar for aaron your brother you ought to make sacred vestments to give him dignity and magnificence you ought to instruct all the ablest craftsmen i myself filled them with wisdom to make aaron's vestments for his consecration to my priesthood these are the vestments they must make breast piece ephod robe embroidered tunic turban and belt your brother aaron and his sons will serve me with these sacred vestments for them you shall use gold purple wool violet shade and red crimson wool and fine twined linen they ought to make the effort of gold purple wool violet shade and red crimson wool and fine twined linen the work of a skilled embroiderer it must have two shoulder straps fitted to it to join its two ends together the woven band on it to hold it on is to be of similar workmanship and to form one piece with it this must be of gold thread purple wool violet shade and red crimson wool and fine twined linen you will then take two precious stones and engrave them with the names of the sons of israel six of their names on one stone the remaining six on the other in the order of their birth with the art of a jeweler of an engraver of seals 
you want to engrave the two stones with the names of the sons of Israel and mount them in settings of gold mesh you ought to fasten the two stones commemorating the sons of Israel to the shoulder straps of the ephod in this way Aaron will bear their names on his shoulder in the presence of Yahweh that he may remember them you must also make golden rosettes and two chains of pure gold twisted like cord you ought to attach these cord like chains to the rosettes you ought to make the breast piece of judgment finely embroidered of the same workmanship as the apron you ought to make it of gold purple wool violet shade and red crimson wool and fine twined linen it is to be square and doubled over 9 inches wide in this you ought to set four rows of stones sad topaz carbuncle for the first row emerald sapphire diamond for the second row for the third row hyacinth ruby amethyst and for the fourth row beryl onyx jasper these are to be mounted in gold settings there are to be 12 according to the number of the sons of israel whose names are engraved on them they are to be engraved like seals each with the name of one of the 12 tribes for the breast piece you will make chains of pure gold twisted like cords and also two gold rings and fix them to its two upper corners you must fasten the two gold cords to the two rings fixed on the corners of the breast piece the other two ends of the cords you must fasten to the two rosettes so that they will be attached to the shoulder straps of the ephod on the front you ought to make two gold rings and fix them to the two lower corners of the breast piece on the inner hem next to the ephod on the front you ought to make two more gold rings and fix them low down on the front of the two shoulder pieces of the ephod close to the seam above the woven band of the ephod you must secure the breast piece by passing a ribbon of violet purple through its rings and those of the ephod so that the breast piece will sit above the woven band and not come apart from the ephod so when Aaron enters the sanctuary bearing the breast piece of judgment he will bear the names of the sons of Israel on his breast to call them to mind continually in the presence of Yahweh in the breast piece of judgment you will put the urim and the thummim by means of which he takes the decisions for the israelites aaron shall have them on his breast when he goes into yahweh's presence you ought to make the robe of the ephod entirely of violet purple in the center it must have an opening for the head with a border woven around the neck to keep the robe from being torn you shall decorate the lower hem with pomegranates of purple wool violet shade and red crimson wool and fine twined linen and you shall fit gold bells between gold bells and pomegranates will be alternately all around the lower hem of the robe Aaron is to wear this robe when he serves before God so that the tinkling of the bells will be heard whenever he enters the sanctuary and goes into Yahweh's presence or leaves it if he does not he will die you ought to make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it consecrated to the Lord you will tie this to the front of the head piece with a ribbon of violet purple Aaron is to wear it on his forehead and so take on himself any sins which the sons of Israel may have committed 
in any of their sacred offerings Aaron must always wear this plate on his forehead to draw down on the Israelites the good will of Yahweh you shall also weave the shirt of fine linen and make a head piece of fine linen and a belt the work of a skilled embroiderer you ought to make shirt and belt and headdress for the sons of Aaron to make them dignified and beautiful you will put all these ornaments on your brother Aaron and his sons you will then anoint and invest and consecrate them to serve me in the priesthood you ought to make them linen shorts to cover their nakedness from waist to thigh Aaron and his sons must wear these when they go into the tent of meeting and when they approach the altar to serve the sanctuary if they do not they will be guilty and die this is a permanent rule for Aaron and for his descendants after him Exodus chapter 29 this is the ceremony you must use when you consecrate them to serve me in the priesthood take one young bull and two rams without any defects unleavened cakes mixed with oil and unleavened wafers spread with oil made from fine wheat flour you must put these things into a basket and present them in the basket at the same time as the young bull and the two rams then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting after they have been bathed take the vestments and dress Aaron in the shirt the robe over the ephod the ephod and the breast piece and the embroidered belt put the head dress on his head and tie on it the sacred plate then take the chrism oil and pour it on his head and so anoint him next bring his sons and clothe them with shirts pass the belts around their waists and put the head dresses on their heads with this the priesthood will be theirs forever this is how you are to ordain Aaron and his sons you are to bring the bull in front of the tent of meeting Aaron and his sons are to lay their hands on its head kill the bull there before Yahweh at the entrance to the tent of meeting then take some of its blood and with your finger put it on the horns of the altar next pour out the rest of the blood at the foot of the altar and then take all the fat that covers the inner organs the fatty mass which is over the liver the two kidneys with their covering fat and burn them on the altar as for the bull's flesh its skin and its intestines you must burn them outside the camp for it is an offering to take away the sins of the priests next you are to take one of the rams Aaron and his sons are to lay their hands on its head you are to kill the ram take up its blood and pour it out on the sides of the altar next divide the ram in pieces and wash the inner organs and legs and put them on top of the head and the other pieces then burn the whole ram on the altar this is a fine offering to yahweh a fragrant offering by fire next you are to take the other ram Aaron and his sons are to lay their heads on its head you want to kill the ram take some of its blood and put it on the lobe of Aaron's right ear on the lobes of his sons right ears the thumbs of their right hands and the big toes of their right feet and pour out the rest of the blood on the sides of the altar then take some of the blood that remains on the altar together with the chrism oil and sprinkle it on Aaron and his vestments 
and on his sons and their vestments so that he and his vestments will be consecrated and his sons too and their vestments you ought to take the fatty parts of the ram the tail the fat that covers the inner organs the fatty mass which is over the liver the two kidneys with their covering fat and also the right thigh for this is a ram for the clothing ceremony you want to take a loaf of bread a cake of bread made with oil and a wafer from a basket of unleavened bread placed before Yahweh and put it all into Aaron's hands and those of his sons and make the gesture of offering before Yahweh then you ought to take them back and burn them on the altar on top of the burnt offering as a sweet smelling offering which pleases Yahweh you ought to take the breast of the ram and make the gesture of offering before Yahweh this is to be your own portion you ought to consecrate the breast that has been thus offered as also the thigh that is set aside the breast that is which has been offered and the thigh that has been set aside from the ram this by perpetual law will be the portion that Aaron and his sons are to receive from the sons of Israel this is the portion set aside a portion the sons of Israel are to set aside from their communion sacrifices the portion they owe to Yahweh Aaron's sacred vestments are to pass to his sons after him and they will wear them for their anointing and consecration the son of Aaron who comes after him in the priesthood and he enters the tent of meeting to serve in the sanctuary must wear them for 7 days you want to take the ram used for the ordination and cook its meat in a holy place Aaron and his sons will eat the meat of the ram and also the bread that is in the basket at the entrance to the tent of meeting they ought to eat what was used in the ceremony of forgiveness during their ordination no layman may eat these they are holy things if any of the meat from the ordination sacrifice or the bread should be left till morning you must put what is left in the fire it is not to be eaten it is a holy thing for Aaron and his sons you ought to do exactly as i have commanded you you ought to spend 7 days in ordaining them on each day of this week you are also to offer a bull as a sacrifice for sin in atonement by offering an atonement sacrifice for sin you will take away sin from the altar then you must anoint it and so consecrate it for 7 days you want to repeat the atonement sacrifice for the altar and consecrate it so it will be extremely holy and whatever touches it will become holy this is what you are to offer on the altar two yearling lambs day by day continually the first lamb you must offer in the morning the second in the evening twilight with the first lamb you must offer two pounds of fine flour mixed with one quart of purest oil and pour out one quart of wine as an offering the second lamb you must offer in the evening twilight do this with the same amounts of flour olive oil and wine as in the morning this is a sweet smelling offering which pleases yahweh this is the perpetual offering which is to be offered from generation to generation at the entrance to the tent of meeting in the presence of yahweh that is where i shall meet you and speak to you there i will teach the people of israel and this place will be consecrated by the presence of my glory in this way i will consecrate the tent of meeting and the altar 
and Aaron too and his sons to be priests in my service for I will remain with the people of Israel and I will be their god and so they will know that it is I their god who brought them out of the land of Egypt to live among them I their god Exodus chapter 30 You must make an altar on which to burn incense you ought to make it out of acacia wood it is to be 1 cubit long and 1 cubit wide that is to say square and to stand 2 cubits high its horns ought to be one piece with it the top of the altar its surrounding sides and its horns ought to be covered with pure gold and decorated with a gold edge all around you ought to put two gold rings on it below the edge on its two opposite sides these ought to hold the poles used for carrying it these poles you must make of acacia wood and cover with gold you ought to set up the altar before the veil that protects the ark of the covenant opposite the ark and the mercy seat from where i speak to you on this altar aaron must burn fragrant incense each morning when he prepares the lamps and in the evening twilight when aaron puts the lamps back he must burn it again you must make these offerings of incense before yahweh unfailingly from generation to generation you must not offer unholy incense on this altar or animal or grain offering or pour out any wine offering on it once a year aaron is to perform the atonement on the horns of this altar he shall do this atonement with the blood of the victim to take away sins and you shall do the same once a year in the generations to come This ceremony will be extremely holy in the eyes of Yahweh. Yahweh spoke to Moses and said, "When you take a census and make a register of the people of Israel, each is to pay Yahweh a ransom for his life, so that no disaster comes on them when the census is being made. Everyone subject to the census." must pay the required amount of money weighed according to the official standard and this shall be set aside for Yahweh every one subject to the census that is to say of 20 years and over must pay the sum set aside for Yahweh the rich man is not to give more nor the poor man less when they pay this amount for their lives you will use this ransom money given to you by the people of Israel for the upkeep of the tent of meeting it will remind Yahweh of the people of Israel and will be the ransom for our lives Yahweh spoke to Moses and said you must also make a bronze basin on your stand for washing you must place it between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it in this Aaron and his sons must wash their hands and feet when they are about to enter the tent of meeting they must wash in water lest they die and when they have to approach the altar for their service to burn the offering burned in honor of Yahweh they must wash their hands and feet lest they die This is a lasting rule for them for Aaron and for his descendants from generation to generation. Yahweh spoke to Moses and said, "Take the choicest spices, 12 pounds of liquid myrrh, 6 pounds of sweet-smelling cinnamon, 6 pounds of scented cane, and 12 pounds of cassia, all weighed according to the official standard." and one gallon of olive oil these you ought to make into a holy oil for anointing 
such a blend as the perfumer might make with it you are to anoint the tent of meeting and the ark of the covenant the table and all its furnishings the lampstand and all its accessories the altar of incense the altar of burnt offering with all its furnishings and the basin with its stand in this way you shall consecrate them and they will remain extremely holy and whatever touches them will become holy you must anoint aaron and his sons and consecrate them so that they may be priests in my service then you ought to say to the people of israel such will be the oil of holy anointing from generation to generation it is not to be used in any ordinary anointing of the body nor are you to make any other oil of the same mixture it is a holy thing and you must consider it holy whoever makes any like it or uses it on an ordinary person shall be outlawed from the people yahweh said to moses take sweet spices storax onica gaibanum sweet spices and pure frankincense in equal parts and make an incense such as the perfumes might make salted pure and holy crush a part of it into a fine powder and put some of this in front of the ark of the covenant in the tent of meeting the place appointed for my meetings with you you must regard it as most holy you are not to take any incense like it for your own use you must hold it to be a holy thing reserved for yahweh whoever copies it for use as perfume shall be outlawed from his people Exodus chapter 31 Yahweh spoke to Moses and said See I have chosen Bezalel son of Uri son of Hur of the tribe of Judah I have filled him with the spirit of God with wisdom understanding skill and the ability for every kind of craft for the art of designing and working in gold and silver and bronze for cutting stones to be set for carving in wood for every kind of craft here and now i give him a partner oholiab son of ahisamach one of the tribe of dan and to all the men that have skill i have given more for them to carry out all that i have commanded you the tent of meeting the ark of the covenant and the mercy seat that is on top of the ark and all the furniture of the holy tent the table and its furnishings the pure lampstand and all its accessories the altar of incense the altar of burnt offering with all its furnishings the basin with its stand the beautiful priestly vestments that is the sacred vestment of Aaron the priest and the vestments of his sons for the priestly functions the anointing oil and the fragrant incense for the sanctuary in this they ought to do exactly as i have directed you yahweh said to moses speak to the people of israel and say you shall keep my sabbath carefully because the sabbath is a sign between myself and you from generation to generation to show that it is i yahweh who have made you my own people you must keep the sabbath then it is to be held sacred by you whoever does not keep it but works on that day must be put to death work is to be done for 6 days but the 7th day must be a day of complete rest consecrated to yahweh whoever does any work on the sabbath day must be put to death the people of israel 
or to keep the sabbath observing it from generation to generation this is a lasting covenant between myself and the people of israel the sabbath is a sign forever since in 6 days yahweh made the heavens and earth but on the 7th day he rested and drew breath when yahweh had finished speaking to moses about all these things he gave him the two slabs of the statement slabs of stone written with the finger of god exodus chapter 32 when the people saw that moses was so long in coming down from the mountain they assembled around aaron and said to him come make us gods to walk ahead of us as for this moses who brought us out of egypt we don't know what has happened to him and aaron said to them take the gold earrings from your wives your sons and daughters and bring them to me so all the people took off their earrings and brought them to aaron he took what they gave him and with a graving tool made the gold into a molten calf they then said these are your gods o israel who brought you out of egypt now when aaron saw this he built an altar before the molten calf and cried out tomorrow will be a feast day for yahweh so next day they rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings and brought peace offerings they then sat down to eat and drink and got up to make merry then yahweh said to moses go down at once for your people whom you brought up from the land of egypt have corrupted themselves they have quickly turned from the way i commanded them and have made for themselves a molten calf they have bowed down before it and sacrificed to it and said these are your gods israel who brought you out of egypt and yahweh said to moses i see that these people are a stiff necked people now just leave me that my anger may blaze against them i will destroy them but of you i will make a great nation but moses calmed the anger of yahweh his god and said why o yahweh should your anger burst against your people whom you brought out of the land of egypt with such great power and with a mighty hand let not the egyptians say yahweh brought them out with evil intent for he wanted to kill them in the mountains and wipe them from the face of the earth turn away from the heat of your anger and do not bring disaster on your people remember your servants abraham isaac and jacob and the promise you yourself swore i will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven and all this land i spoke about i will give to them as an everlasting inheritance yahweh then changed his mind and would not yet harm his people moses then returned and came down from the mountain carrying in his hand the two slabs of the statement slabs written on both sides back and front these slabs were the work of god and the writing graven on the slabs was the writing of god when joshua heard the noise of the people who were shouting he said to moses there is a sound of war in the camp but moses answered it is not a victory song not the cry of defeat that i hear but the sound of singing when he drew near to the camp and saw the calf and the dancing his anger burst forth and he threw the slabs from his hands and shattered them against the base of the mountain then he seized the calf they had made 
and burned it in the fire grinding it into a powder that he scattered over the surface of the water and this he made the israelites drink moses said to aaron what did these people do to you that you brought such a great sin on them and aaron said don't let your anger be roused you know these people and how evil they are they said to me make us gods to go before us as for this moses a man who brought us out of egypt we don't know what has happened to him i then said to them that whoever has gold was to give it over to me i threw it in the fire and out came this calf moses saw that the people were out of control for aaron had let them run wild to a point that would make them an easy prey for their opponents then moses stood at the gate of the camp and said all those for yahweh come to me and all the sons of levi rallied round him then he said to them this is what yahweh the god of israel commands let each one carry a sword at his side go back and forth from door to door and don't hesitate to kill even your brothers your companions and your relatives the levites did what moses had ordered and that day about 3000 men fell moses then said from now on your hands are consecrated to yahweh for each of you has been able to turn against his very sons and brothers because of this yahweh gives you today his blessing the next day moses said to the people you have committed a very grave sin but now i am going up to yahweh perhaps i will obtain pardon for your sin so moses went towards yahweh and said ah this people has committed a very great sin they made a god out of gold and now please forgive their sin if not blot me out of the book you have written yahweh said to moses whoever has sinned against me i will blot him out from my book go now lead the people where i told you my angel will walk before you and on the day of punishment i will punish them for their sin and so yahweh punished the people with a plague because of the calf aaron had made for them exodus chapter 33 yahweh said to moses go now leave this place you and the people you brought out from the land of egypt and go to the land i promised on oath to abraham isaac and jacob when i said i will give it to your descendants i will send an angel before you to drive out the canaanites the amorites the hittites and the perizzites the hivites and the jebusites but i will not go with you to this land flowing with milk and honey for you are a stiff-necked people and i might destroy you on the way when the people heard these distressing words they were very sad and none of them put on any ornaments yahweh then said to moses say to the israelites you are a stiff-necked people if i were to go with you even for a moment i would destroy you now take off your ornaments that i may know what i shall do to you and so the israelites gave up their ornaments before leaving mount horeb moses then took the tent and pitched it for himself outside the camp at a distance from it and called it the tent of meeting whoever sought yahweh would go out to the tent of meeting outside the camp and when moses went to the tent all the people would stand each one at the entrance to his tent 
and keep looking towards Moses until he entered the tent. Now, as soon as Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and remain at the entrance to the tent while Yahweh spoke with Moses. When all the people saw the pillar of cloud at the entrance to the tent, they would arise and worship each one at the entrance to his tent. Then Yahweh would speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks with his neighbor and then Moses would return to the camp but his servant Joshua son of Nun would not leave the tent Then Moses said to Yahweh You say to me lead this people up but you haven't told me who you will send with me and yet you have said that you know me by name and that i have found favor in your sight and now if i have found favor in your sight let me know your ways that i may know you and so find favor in your sight look this people is your own people yahweh said my face will go with you and i will give you rest and moses said If your face does not come with us do not take us from here and how will anyone here know that you look kindly on me and my people will it not be because you go with us in that way i myself and your people will be distinguished from every other nation on the face of the earth Yahweh then said to Moses what you have said i will do for i look kindly on you and i have known you by name moses said then let me see your glory and he said i will make all my goodness pass before you and proclaim the name of yahweh before you for i am gracious to whom i want to be gracious and i am merciful to whom i want to be merciful then yahweh said You cannot see my face because man cannot see me and live. And he added, See this place near me. You shall stand on the rock and when my glory passes, I will put you in a hollow of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Exodus chapter 34 Yahweh said to Moses cut two slabs of stone like the first and I will write on the slabs the words that were on the former slabs that you broke be ready in the morning and come up to mount sinai and wait for me on the top of the mountain no one will go up with you and no one is to be seen anywhere on the mountain even the sheep and the cattle are not to graze near the mountain so moses cut two slabs of stone like the first then he rose early in the morning and went up mount sinai as yahweh had commanded taking in his hands the two slabs of stone and Yahweh came down in a cloud and stood there with him and Moses called on the name of Yahweh then Yahweh passed in front of him and cried out Yahweh Yahweh is a god full of pity and mercy slow to anger and abounding in truth and loving kindness he shows loving kindness to the thousandth generation and forgives wickedness rebellion and sin yet he does not leave the guilty without punishment even punishing the children and their children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation moses hastened to bow down to the ground and worship he then said if you really look kindly on me my lord 
please come and walk in our midst and even though we are a stiff necked people pardon our wickedness and our sin and make us yours yahweh said i am making a covenant with you in the presence of all the people i will do marvels never yet done in any land or nation so that all the people among whom you live may see how awesome is the work of yahweh that i will do for you obey what i command you today i will drive out before you the amorites the canaanites the hittites the perizzites the hivites and the jebusites take care to make no treaty with the inhabitants of the country you enter lest it be a snare for you rather shall you knock down their altars and smash their sacred stones and cut down their asherah poles do not worship another god for yahweh whose name is jealous is a jealous god so make no treaty with those who live in the land for they prostitute themselves to their gods and sacrifice to them otherwise they will invite you and you will eat of their sacrifices then you will take their daughters for your sons and as those daughters prostitute themselves to their gods they will lead your sons to do the same make no molten gods for yourself keep the feast of unleavened bread for 7 days in the month of abib you are to eat unleavened bread for that was the month you went out of egypt all that first opens the womb is mine and every first born male of your livestock sheep and cattle you shall redeem the first born of your donkey with your lamb if you do not redeem it you must break its neck every first born of your sons you shall redeem and no one shall appear before me empty handed you shall work for 6 days and rest on the 7th day even at the time of ploughing and harvesting you shall rest celebrate the feast of weeks with the first fruits of the wheat harvest and the feast of ingathering at the turning of the year three times each year all your men shall appear before yahweh god of israel i will drive out nations before you and extend your boundaries no one shall covet your country when you go up three times each year to appear before yahweh your god do not offer the blood of your sacrifice to me together with leavened bread and do not let anything from the passover feast remain until morning bring the very best of the first fruits of your soil to the house of yahweh your god do not boil a kid in the milk of its mother then yahweh said to moses write down these words for these are the requirements of the covenant that i have made with you and with israel moses remained there with yahweh 40 days and 40 nights without eating bread or drinking water he wrote on the slabs the words of the covenant the 10 commandments when moses came down from mount sinai with the two slabs of the statement in his hands he was not aware that the skin of his face was radiant after speaking with yahweh Aaron and all the sons of Israel saw that Moses' face was radiant and they were afraid to go near him but Moses called them and Aaron with all the elders of the community drew near and Moses spoke to them afterwards all the Israelites came near and he told them all that Yahweh had commanded him on Mount Sinai When Moses had finished speaking with them he put a veil over his face Whenever Moses went before Yahweh to speak with him he took off the veil 
until he came out again and when he came out and told them what he had been commanded the israelites saw that his face was radiant moses would then replace the veil over his face until he went again to speak with yahweh exodus chapter 35 moses assembled the whole community of the people of israel and said to them this is what yahweh has ordered to be done work is to be done for 6 days but the 7th is to be a holy day for you a day of complete rest consecrated to yahweh whoever does any work on that day shall be put to death you must not light a fire on the sabbath day in any of your homes moses spoke to the whole community of the people of israel this is what yahweh has commanded set aside a contribution for yahweh out of your possessions let all give willingly and bring this contribution for yahweh gold silver and bronze purple wool of violet shade and red crimson wool fine linen goat's hair ram skins dyed red and fine leather acacia wood oil for the light spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense precious stones and gems to be set in effort and breast piece let all the most skilled craftsmen among you come and make all that yahweh has commanded the holy tent its tent and its covering its hooks and its frames its crossbars its posts and its bases the ark with its poles the mercy seat on the ark and the veil that screens it the table with its poles and all the furnishings for it and the loaves of offering the lamp stand for the light with its accessories its lamps and the oil for the light the altar of incense with its poles the anointing oil the fragrant incense and the screen for the entrance to the holy tent the altar of burnt offering with its bronze grating its poles and all the furnishings for it the basin and its stand the hangings of the court its posts it bases and the screen for the gateway to the court the pegs of the holy tent and of the court together with the ear cords the beautiful priestly vestments for service in the sanctuary that is the sacred vestments for Aaron the priest and the vestments of his sons for the priestly functions then the whole community of israel withdrew from moses presence and all those who wanted to give came bringing their contribution for yahweh for making the tent of meeting for all its functions and for the sacred vestments they came men and women all giving willingly bringing brooches rings bracelets necklaces gold things of every kind the gold which each one had offered to yahweh all those who happened to own purple wool of violet shade or red crimson wool fine linen goat's hair ram skins dyed red or fine leather brought them all who could contribute to the collection of silver and bronze brought their contribution for yahweh and all who happened to own acacia wood suitable for any of the work to be done brought it all the skilled women set their hands to spinning and brought purple wool of violet shade and red crimson wool and fine linen from what they had spun all the women willingly used their special skill and spun the goat's hair the leaders brought precious stones and gems to be set in effort and breast piece and the spices and oil for the light 
for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense all the men and women of israel who wanted to contribute to all the work that yahweh had ordered through moses to be done brought their free offering to yahweh moses said to the people of israel see yahweh has chosen besalel son of uri son of hur of the tribe of judah he has filled him with the spirit of god and given him understanding skill and ability for every kind of craft for the art of designing and working in gold and silver and bronze for cutting stones to be set for carving in wood for every kind of craft and to him and oholia son of ahisamak of the tribe of dan he has given the gift of teaching he has filled them with skill to carry out all the crafts of engraver weaver of fine linen embroiderer in purple wool of violet shade and red in crimson wool and fine linen as well as of the common weaver they are able to do work of all kinds and are skillful designers exodus chapter 36 besalel and oholia and all the skilled craftsmen to whom yahweh had given skill and understanding to carry out all that was required for the building of the sanctuary did their work exactly as yahweh had directed moses then called besalel and oholia and all the skilled craftsmen to whom yahweh had given ability and who felt able to do the work they received from moses all that the people of israel had brought as contribution for the work of building the sanctuary in the meantime the people continued each morning to bring their offerings so the skilled craftsmen who did all the sacred work besides their own work went to tell moses the people are bringing more than what is needed for the work which yahweh has told us to do moses then sent this command throughout the camp let no one man or woman do anything more toward the collection for the sanctuary so the people were stopped from bringing any more the material they had was enough and more than enough to complete all the work all the most skilled craftsmen among the workers made the holy tent they made it with 10 sheets of fine twined linen of purple wool violet shade and red and of crimson wool finely embroidered with the angels the length of a single sheet was 28 cubits its width 4 cubits all the sheets being of the same size they sewed five of the sheets together and the other five also they attached loops of violet wool to the border of the last sheet in one set and did the same for the border of the last sheet in the other set they put 50 loops on the first sheet and matching them one by one 50 loops on the border of the last sheet in the second set they made 50 gold clasps and with them joined the two sets into one piece next they made sheets of goat's hair to form a tent over the holy tent they made 11 of these the length of a single sheet was 30 cubits its width 4 cubits the 11 sheets were all of the same size they joined five of these sheets together into one set the remaining six into another they attached 50 loops to the border of the last sheet in the first set and 50 loops to the border of the last sheet in the second set and they made 50 bronze clasps to join the two sets 
so as to form one cover. They made another covering of ram skin dyed red to be put over the holy tent and a covering of fine leather to spread over that. The holy tent was made with boards of acacia wood which stood upright. Each board was 10 cubits long and 1 and 1/2 cubits wide. Each board was fitted with two matching arms. This they did for all the boards of the holy tent. They made 20 boards for the southern side with 40 silver bases to put under the 20 boards. two bases under the first board to receive its two matching arms and so on for the other boards for the other side on the north they made 20 boards and 40 silver bases two bases under each board for the back on the west they made six boards and they made two boards for the corners at the back of the holy tent These boards were joined at the bottom and also at the top up to the level of the first ring this they did with the two boards that were to form the two corners in this way there were eight boards with their 16 silver bases two bases under each board they made crossbars of acacia wood five to hold the boards together that were to form one side of the holy tent five on the other side to hold the boards that were to form the west side they made the middle bar fixed off way up to run from one end to the other they covered the boards with gold and put gold rings on them to take the cross bars which they covered with gold they made the veil of purple wool violet shade and red of crimson wool and of fine twined linen skillfully embroidered with cherubim for hanging this veil they made four posts of acacia wood and covered them with gold with gold hooks and they cast four silver bases for them for the entrance to the tent they made a curtain of purple wool violet shade and red and of crimson wool and fine twined linen the work of a skilled embroiderer for the hanging of this they made five posts with hooks their tops and rods they plated with gold their five bases were of bronze exodus chapter 37 besalel made the ark of acacia wood 2 and 1/2 cubits long 1 and 1/2 cubits wide 1 and 1/2 cubits high he covered it inside and out with pure gold and decorated it all around with a gold edge he cast four gold rings for the ark attaching them to its four feet two rings on one side and two rings on the other he also made poles of acacia wood covering them with gold and he passed the poles through the rings on the sides of the ark for carrying it also he made of pure gold the mercy seat 2 and 1/2 cubits long and 1 and 1/2 cubits wide for the two ends of the mercy seat he made two golden cherubim of hammered gold the first cherub for one end and the second for the other and fastened them to the two ends of the mercy seat so that they made one piece with it the cherubim had their wings spread upward so that they overshadowed the mercy seat they faced one another he made the table of acacia wood two cubits long one cubit wide and a half cubit high he covered it with pure gold and decorated it all around with a gold edge he surrounded it with a frame 3 inches wide and decorated this with a gold edge he cast four gold rings for it 
and fixed these at the four corners where the four legs were the rings lay close to the frame to hold the poles for carrying the table he made the poles of acacia wood and covered them with gold these were for carrying the table he made furnishings of pure gold for the table dishes cups jars and bowls to be used for the wine offerings he made the lampstand of pure gold and made the lampstand base and stem of hammered gold its decorative flowers including buds and petals were of one piece with it six branches extended from the sides of it three from one side three from the other the first branch carried three decorative flowers shaped like almond blossoms each with its bud and petals the second branch too carried three decorative flowers shaped like almond blossoms each with its bud and petals and similarly all six branches extending from the lampstand the lampstand itself carried four decorative flowers shaped like almond blossoms each with its bud and petals one bud under the first two branches extending from the lampstand one under the next pair one under the last pair for there were six branches extending from the lampstand the buds and the branches were of one piece with the lampstand and the whole was made from a single piece of pure hammered gold then he made the lamps for it seven of them with tongues and trays of pure gold he used 75 pounds of pure gold for making the lamp stand and all its accessories he made the altar of incense out of acacia wood it was 1 cubit long and 1 cubit wide that is to say square and 2 cubits high its horns were one piece with it the top of it its surrounding sides and its horns he covered with pure gold and decorated it all around with a gold edge he fixed two gold rings to it below the edge on its two opposite sides to hold the poles used for carrying it these poles he made of acacia wood and covered them with gold he also made the sacred anointing oil and the pure fragrant incense blending it as perfumes too Exodus chapter 38 He made the altar of burnt offering out of acacia wood a square 5 cubits long and 5 cubits wide and 3 cubits high at its four corners he put horns the horns being of one piece with it and covered it with bronze he made all the altar vessels cauldrons shovels sprinkling basins pans for the ashes fire pans he made all the vessels for the altar out of bronze he made a grating for it of bronze network which he set under the ledge below so that it reached off way up the altar he cast four rings and fixed them on the four corners of the bronze grating to hold the poles he made the poles of acacia wood and covered them with bronze and placed them through the rings on the sides of the altar for carrying it he made the altar hollow of boards He also made the bronze basin and its bronze base from the mirrors of the women who served at the entrance to the tent of meeting. He made the court for the southern side of the court facing the south country there were 100 cubits of hangings of fine twined linen their 20 posts with their bases were of bronze their hooks and rods of silver for the northern side 
there were 100 cubits of hangings their 20 posts with their 20 bases were of bronze their hooks and rods of silver for the western side there were 50 cubits of hangings carried on 10 posts set in 10 bases with their hooks and rods of silver 50 cubits too for the eastern side facing the sunrise on one side of the gateway there were 15 cubits of hangings carried on three posts set in three bases on the other side there were 15 cubits of hangings with their three posts and their three bases all the hangings enclosing the court were of fine twined linen the bases for the posts were of bronze and their hooks of silver like the rods at the top the tips of the posts were of silver and had rods of silver the screen for the gateway of the court the work of a skilled embroiderer was made of purple wool violet shade and red of crimson wool and fine twined linen it was 20 cubits long and along the width of it 5 cubits high like the hangings of the court its four posts with their four bases were of bronze the hook for the posts were of silver like the plating at the top and like their rods the peg for the holy tent and for the court enclosure were all of bronze here is the account of metals used for the holy tent the tent of meeting the account drawn up by the levites under the direction of Ithamar, son of Aaron, the priest, as Moses had ordered. Besalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made all that Yahweh had commanded. His partner was Oholiab, son of Ahisamar, of the tribe of Dan, engraver, weaver of fine linen, embroiderer in purple wool, of violet shade and red in crimson wool and fine linen. The amount of gold used in the work, the entire work for the sanctuary, this was gold consecrated by offering, weighed 2,195 pounds, weighed according to the official standard. The silver collected when the census of the community was taken weighed 7,550 pounds weighed according to the official standard. A census of all those of 20 years and over was made. They were 603,550. Each of them paid a small silver coin. The 7,500 pounds of silver were used for costing the 100 bases for the sanctuary and the veil, 75 pounds for each base. With the remaining 50 pounds of silver, he made the hooks for the posts, the plating for their tops and their rods. The bronze consecrated by offering amounted to 5,310 pounds and with this he made the bases for the entrance of the tent of meeting. The bronze altar with its grating of bronze and all the furnishings for it, the bases for the enclosure of the court, those for the gateway to the court, all the pegs for the holy tent and all the pegs for the court enclosure. Exodus chapter 39 From the purple wool, violet shade and red, the crimson wool and the fine linen they made beautiful priestly vestments for service in the sanctuary. They made the sacred vestments for service for Aaron as Yahweh had directed Moses. They made the ephod of gold thread, purple wool, violet shade and red, crimson wool and fine twined linen. 
they beat gold into thin plates and cut these into fine strips to weave into the purple wool violet shade and red into the crimson wool and the fine linen as does the weaver of fine linen for the breast piece they made two shoulder straps joined to it at its two ends the woven band on it to hold it formed one piece with it and was of similar workmanship this was of gold thread purple wool violet shade and red crimson wool and fine twined linen as yahweh had directed moses they fashioned the precious stones mounted in settings of gold mesh and engraved as a seal is engraved with the names of the sons of israel they fastened the stones to the shoulder straps of the breast piece stones commemorating the sons of israel as yahweh had directed moses they made the breast piece a finely embroidered of the same workmanship as the ephod of gold thread purple wool violet shade and red and fine twined linen it was square and folded double 9 inches long and 9 inches wide in this way they set four rows of stones sad topaz carbuncle for the first row emerald sapphire diamond for the second row for the third row hyacinth ruby amethyst and for the fourth row beryl onyx jasper these were mounted in settings of gold mesh and bore the names of the 12 sons of israel they were engraved as seals or each with the name of one of the 12 tribes for the breast piece they made chains of pure gold twisted like cords they made two gold rosettes and two gold rings and they fastened the two gold cords to the two rings fixed on the corners of the breast piece the other two ends of the cords they fastened to the two rosettes they were thus attached to the shoulder straps of the ephod on the front they made two gold rings and fixed them to the lower corners of the breast piece on the inner hem next to the ephod and they made two more gold rings and fixed them low down on the front of the two shoulder straps of the ephod close to the seam above the woven band of the apron they secured the breast piece by passing a ribbon of violet purple through its rings and those of the apron so that the breast piece would sit above the woven hand and not come apart from the ephod as yahweh had directed moses then they made the robe of the ephod woven entirely of violet purple the opening in the center of it was like the neck of a shirt and around the opening was a border to keep the robe from tearing the lower hem of the robe they decorated with pomegranates of purple wool violet shade and red crimson wool and fine twined linen they also made bells of pure gold and placed them all around the lower hem of the robe between the pomegranates bells and pomegranates alternately all around the lower hem of the robe as yahweh had directed moses then they made the shirts of finely woven linen for aaron and his sons the headdress of fine linen the shorts of fine twined linen the belts of fine twined linen of purple wool violet shade and red and of crimson wool finely embroidered as yahweh had directed moses they also made the plate the holy plate of pure gold and engraved on it consecrated to yahweh as a man engraves a seal they tied to this a ribbon of violet purple to secure it to the top of the turban 
as Yahweh had directed Moses. So all the work of the tabernacle, that is the tent of meeting, was completed. In carrying it out, the sons of Israel had done exactly as Yahweh had directed Moses. Then they brought to Moses all these things, the tent of meeting and all its furnishings, its hooks, frames, crossbars, posts, bases, the covering of ram skins dyed red, the covering of fine leather and the screening veil, the ark of the covenant with its poles and the mercy seat, the table with all its furnishings and the loaves of offering, the lampstand of pure gold with its lamps, the lamps that were to be set on it and all its accessories, the oil too for the light, the golden altar, the anointing oil, the fragrant incense, the curtain for the entrance to the tent, the bronze altar with its grating of bronze, its poles and all its furnishings, the basin and its stand, hangings of the court with their posts and bases, and the curtain for the gateway to the court, its cords, its specks, and all the furniture for the service in the holy tent, the tent of meeting, the beautiful priestly vestments for service in the sanctuary, that is, the sacred vestments for Aaron the priest, and the vestments for his sons for the priestly functions. The Israelites had done all the work exactly as Yahweh had directed Moses. Moses examined the whole work and he could see they had done it as Yahweh had directed him and Moses blessed them. Exodus chapter 40 Yahweh spoke to Moses and said, On the first day of the first month, you ought to erect the holy tent, the tent of meeting, and place the Ark of the Covenant in it, screening it with a veil. Bring in the lampstand too, and set up its lamps. Place the golden altar of incense in front of the Ark of the Covenant, and set up the screen at the entrance of the holy tent. Place the altar for burnt offerings in front of the entrance to the holy tent, the tent of meeting. Place the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar, and fill it with water. Set up the enclosure of the court, and hang the curtain at the gateway of the court. Then, taking the sacred oil, anoint the holy tent and everything in it, consecrating it with its furniture to make it a holy place. Anoint the altar for burnt offerings with all its furnishings and consecrate the altar, which henceforth will be a most holy thing. Anoint the basin with its stand and consecrate it. Bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting and see that they bathe. They clothe Aaron with the priestly garments and anoint and consecrate him to serve me in the priesthood. Next, bring his sons and clothe them with shirts. Anoint them as you have anointed their father to serve me in the priesthood. This anointing of them is to confer the priesthood on them forever from generation to generation. Moses did this. He did exactly as Yahweh had commanded him. The holy tent was set up on the first day of the first month in the second year. Moses set up the holy tent. He fixed the basis for it, put up its frames, put its crossbars in position, set up its posts. He spread the tent over the holy tent, and on top of this, the covering for the tent, as Yahweh had commanded Moses. 
He took the covenant and placed it inside the ark. He set the poles to the ark in place and put the mercy seat on it. He brought the ark into the holy tent and put the screening veil in place. Thus he screened the ark of Yahweh as Yahweh had commanded Moses. He placed the table in the tent of meeting on the north side of the holy tent outside the veil and on it arranged the loaves before Yahweh as Yahweh had commanded Moses. He put the lampstand in the tent of meeting opposite the table on the southern side of the holy tent and set up the lamps before Yahweh as Yahweh had commanded Moses. He put the golden altar in the tent of meeting in front of the veil and on it burned fragrant incense as Yahweh had commanded Moses. Then he put the screen at the entrance of the holy tent. Then he put the altar for the burnt offerings at the entrance to the tent of meeting and on it offered the burnt offering and grain offering as Yahweh had commanded Moses. He put the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and filled it with water. This was for Aaron and his sons to wash their hands and feet whenever they entered the tent of meeting or approached the altar they washed as Yahweh had commanded Moses. Moses then set up the court around the holy tent and the altar and placed the screen at the gateway to the court. Thus Moses completed the work. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of Yahweh filled the holy tent. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because of the cloud that rested on it and because of the glory of Yahweh that filled the holy tent. At every stage of their journey, whenever the cloud rose from the holy tent, the people of Israel would continue their march. If the cloud did not rise, they waited and would not move their camp until it did. For the cloud rested on the holy tent by day, and a fire shone within the cloud by night for all the house of Israel to see. And so it was for every stage of their journey.